Here's the starting lineup for the Chattanooga Red Wolves. Big club in their captain, number eight, Walipi Coast Race. Eight goal, number 12, Carlos Arvillas. Number 22 is Aaron Lombardi. Number five, McKeel Williams. Number four, Nicholas Cardona. Number 31 is Jackson Brady. And number 24, Andrew Paoli. Number 10, Mayel Malongo. Number 98 is Riley Kraft. Number 15, Walter Varela. And number 29, Alex Tejera. Chattanooga is coached by Ziggy Koratowski, the assistant coach, Fabio Hernandez. Another beautiful night in Cary, North Carolina, Wake Med Soccer Park. Friday night special as we bring you USL League One action. North Carolina FC hosting Chattanooga Red Wolves SC. This game seen right here on ESPN+. And good evening, everyone. Dean Linky, delighted to be reunited with the beautiful man, John Bouye, and for the first time in the broadcast booth from the North Carolina Courage, Emily Gray. We'll start with you, Emily. Great to have you on the broadcast. Yeah, it's great to be here alongside you guys both, and I'm grateful to be part of the North Carolina FC family, where they're allowing me to pursue a passion of mine, such as this. All right, make no mistake, Chattanooga has dominated this series. They're a perfect 7-0. So what do you do? Well, you go ahead and take four players from Chattanooga as we take a look at the list of the four players that North Carolina FC picked up. And they're two special ones that will start tonight, John. Yeah, they certainly are, Dean. And we talk about the attack of North Carolina FC, and Rafa has been a big part of that. Such a talented player, really pulled the strings for the offense for NCFC. But in the back, you always need that veteran leadership. And it comes from Daniel Navarro, such a talented player, physical player, really think gets things done in the back line. All right, Emily, who do you have your eyes on for Chattanooga? Navarro's opposite number, Mikhail Williams at the back for Chattanooga tonight, and he's captain the side once so far this season, so clearly there's leadership from the back. And he has several appearances for Trinidad and Tobago, as well as Colorado Rapids and MLS. Look for him to be a big presence at the back moving forward as well. All right, as we get you set for this one, DJ Benton will not start. Another former member of Chattanooga, it'll be Chris Lou Young. When we return, we'll have the lineups and the kick. North Carolina FC and Chattanooga, USL League One action right here on ESPN+. Plus. I want to be like the pretty people on my TV. Now you can. All I need are gleaming white teeth. We can help you. Can you find the right dentist for me? Rick of Benny Associates, they do cosmetic dental. Will they hurt me? No, they're gentle. I'm terrified of pain. They're the kindest in the land. They sound great. Could you repeat their name? Rick of Benny Associates, Family Dentistry. Rushandfloss.com. So. How do you like your urgent care? At Wake Med, we have urgent care just about everywhere. Urgent care that specializes in orthopedics and kids. MyCare 365 open every day of the year, even virtual urgent care. 
Yup, urgent care, in your jammies, on your tablet. So download the Wake Med All Access app and get urgent care that's caring, convenient, and just the way you like it. Gorgeous evening as Mikey Maldonado, the great holding mid, getting ready, North Carolina FC, Chattanooga. Let's take a look at the starting lineups, Dean, with John and Emily. Emily, let's break down John Bradford's starting lineup for North Carolina FC. Yeah, and a key person in this lineup is uh, Louis Perez. He has back-to-back -back team of the week honors after his first two starts with NCFC. Scored the game-winning goal last week against Omaha. And look for him to be up and down that uh, right wing. And we also have Olex Anderson up top. He's always ever present for this North Carolina FC side and um, look for him to be within the 18 and looking for goals tonight. All right, it'll look like a 4-2-3-1, sometimes like a 4-1-4-1. All right, now let's take a look at the lineup for Chattanooga. New coaching staff and kind of a brand new team here, John Bouillet. Yeah, certainly a lot of new players here for coach. Couple of players he actually brought with him from San Diego on the wings. Varela is very dangerous. Malongo, look for speed on the outside and for them to attack early. You said it, the new coach, Ziggy Koratoski for Chattanooga, owned by Bob Martino. As Chattanooga getting ready, they'll be in their white uniforms. North Carolina FC will be in their blue. And dare I say the blue, Emily's got a little flair to it. I kind of like it. Yeah, I mean, it's the club's colors through and through. And then, yeah, they did a great job with the, the kit this season. Yeah, sprinkled in a little lighter blue in there. I'm digging it. Olax breaking out some purple. I was thinking about doing that to my hair, Dean. But oh, that would have been great. I don't. But then the beautiful man thing might go out the <laughs> window, though. I'm not sure. All right, great to be with both of you. This will be fun. And I mean, Emily, as a soccer player, I mean, this weather. Are you kidding me? This is perfect. Yeah, and Wake Med Soccer Park. It's it's one of the best venues in the country. Probably the most underrated venue, if you ask me. And the pitch is beautiful, and it's a beautiful night for these guys to play this game. So great to have you, Emily. Sorry you're under the conditions of the ACL, but we hope your rehab goes great and you're back out there helping the North Carolina Courage do what they do, and that is be great all of the time. We are underway. Once again, North Carolina FC in their all blue. Chattanooga in the white. And Chattanooga has just flat out dominated the series, John. Yeah, just like you said, Dean, they never, NCFC has never beat Chattanooga, so but is tonight the night for them? David Garcia, in combination with Navarra, has kind of stepped up as the center back combo. Gustavo Fernandez will still continue to get time for North Carolina FC, but at the moment, Garcia and this man right here, Navarro, who makes the game look pretty easy. By far the elder statement, but he's earned it, though, by being the captain as well, Emily, as you mentioned about leadership. Yeah, he's just a tremendous presence at the back end. And for these younger guys on this North Carolina FC squad, he's super important for them to get a hold of the game early and, and for this long stretch of a long season. Chattanooga. Tackle, clean by Ariaga. Olex Anderson takes a shot, it'll be a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina FC, pretty good start here. Yeah, I love Anderson just kind of cutting in right there with the left foot, get a nice shot in. Fans, make good some block there, but an early corner kick here for NCFC. Fans still working their way in here on a Friday night. North Carolina FC normally plays on Saturday night, so a little bit different, but nice to have a Friday night game way to head into the weekend. They'll play it short. Nelson Flores Blanco, who is now an international for the El Salvador full team under Hugo Perez. There's a decent shot, but not quite on target. 
Well, and you can see early on, MCFC just putting some pressure on the back four there. Rafa just getting a little bit of space and trying to play that one in the top corner just a little bit off. Louis Perez, high press on right now for John Bradford and North Carolina FC. As you gotta believe this one's a little bit personal to John Bradford, who's done an amazing job, not just with this program, but working under the great Gary Butte and NCFC youth still running the North Carolina FC Academy, and that really kind of makes it go, don't you think, Emily? Yeah, it's so important for the head coach of the full team to have such a connection to the Academy, especially with this League One setup, where the Academy players can bleed through and, and they can start to build a foundation with that. So well said, Christian Lou Young. Olex will let it roll out of bounds. It'll be a throw in for the home team, North Carolina FC. Early doors as we're walking you up to minute four. Allow me to tell you that Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL League One and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit www.us.select-sport.com for the latest Select products, specials, and more. Select the player's choice. Navarro. He just looks different out there, John. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, he looks like a guy that could make it on the big international stage. Yeah, he certainly does. I mean, he's just got a presence out there on the field. I love it, too, because uh, NCFC right now is just playing a really high line, almost up to mi uh, midfield, if you will, really allowing a lot of space between the back four and Nick Holiday in case he wants to come out and pick something up. Nick Holiday, another great story, just 17 years of age. Wow, that looked offside, yeah. You saw that, didn't you, Emily? It looked offside by a mile. Yeah, for sure. A little delayed flag there, but just maybe waiting to see if he let it out for a throw, but. What a story, though, Nick Holiday is, as he is now the man, and he's only 17. He, once again, this summer, went overseas. Comes from a fantastic family. His dad, a big time football player at North Carolina. So he's got those great genes. And you talk about a super athletic goalkeeper who is becoming a leader. He's starting to get his voice even at 17 years young. That's so important. Yeah, and that's got to be so intimidating if you think about it. As a 17 year old stepping on a field with players that are probably, you know, almost just double in age, but he really does kind of command a performance back there. You know, some of the players even mentioned he's very vocal back there as a goalkeeper, lets them know where their positioning is off, and he's a great shot stopper. Dude. He's been playing since he's 15, and I believe it was his first start. If there's somebody out there, they can correct me, but. It was at Chattanooga, and the man stood on his head and got 10 saves, but Chattanooga was so deep, they were loaded, they just kept bringing firepower. By the end of it, Chattanooga had come back from a 1-0 deficit and scored multiple goals, but before that, it was the holiday show at 15 years old, incredible. Well, you know I have a special heart for goalkeepers, Dean, and you know, there's just something special about, about a goalkeeper and really a, just a talented young man. His future is really bright. Emily, remind us who your goalkeeper was during your time with the Hokies. Mandy McGlynn, she's a current pro at uh, Gotham FC. She actually got the shutout and the win on Wednesday night uh, in the Challenge Cup for them, so good for her. But this weekend, North Carolina Courage, we play Gotham, so won't be rooting for her on the day, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see. That's awesome. Good plug. I didn't even know that. Well done. <laughs> the one day you're not her fan, right? Yeah, the one day. But I will tell you a little story about Nick Holiday. We did a little commercial appearance with the men's team last year, and I, uh, a week after he got his, his driver's license, I was driving in a car with him, or he was driving me. <laughs> so um, that was pretty interesting, but it's good to see him um, being the lead man this year. That's good stuff. I love it. It'll be a Corner kick, corner kick, Chattanooga, seven minutes in. All 10 field players, nine of them with the goalkeeper in and around the goal. Only Olex Anderson around the top of the 18. And Flores Blanco keeping an eye. out of there by Navarro. Got to be an emotional game for him. Paoli a moment ago. So at 
moment, North Carolina FC, you kind of just mentioned it, John. When the game first started, North Carolina FC was doing this, the high press, then they went back to the midfield press. Now they'll go back to the high press again. There's Nelson Flores Blanco trying to head it into space for Rafa Mensingen. Yeah, I think they have the speed up top with Anderson really just to put a pressure on the back four there, see if they can get a mistake, and, and maybe just get an opportunity out of it. Carlos Aviles, the starting goalkeeper out of Dallas, Texas, on time with Tormenta FC. Played back right there by Aaron Lombardi. Lombardi from Argentina. New coaching staff and a whole lot of new players. Chattanooga. The way I understand it, including the four that are here, they lost more than 10 players from last year's team, which is common, a decent amount of turnover. Although I feel like for the most part, when we did lose the captain skeleton, North Carolina C brought back the pieces that they wanted and then added quality pieces. Yeah, I think it's so important year to year to just maintain a core group of players to keep building on the foundation that, that's set up. But yeah, Chattanooga, 13 new players this season. That's that's more than a whole starting 11's worth. So that's tough to tough to get started in the beginning of the year, but they'll find their group as it goes along. That's the wisdom of Emily Gray knocked out of bounds there. It'll be a throw in for Chattanooga. Lombardi quick to get it. He'll toss it in. Lango, we heard John Bouillet talk about him on the wings. Nelson Flores Blanco, feeling a little bit of pressure there from Varela. He also mentioned him. Varela will get it back. Nelson Flores Blanco keeping an eye on him. Trying to stop a cross. Good help over there from Mensingen. And it'll be a throw in far side for Brady. Quick throw in as it'll find the feet of Walef Walefi. Walefi wearing number eight from Brazil. See while Lefty check all the way back to get involved. It's a pretty good ball here to Lombardi. Let's see how the trap is. Nice job with the left shoulder. Good pressure from Perez, but it'll be yet another corner kick. Corner kick, Chattanooga. Yeah, nice work there from Chattanooga. Really just had some pressure on the ball there. Won the ball in the midfield, turned things around, and almost came in on the counter attack here. They'll get their corner kick opportunity. And they are really piling on the pressure in front of Nick Holiday. I mean, it looks like every player for Chattanooga is in front of him. And sometimes that throws the goalkeeper off, just not being able to move out there. 11th minute, still no score. North Carolina FC with a win could take over the top of the table depending on the rest of the scores this weekend, which would be huge when you talk about the growth of this team now in the third season under John Bradford. Well, Lex Anderson is hoping to find it. There's a shot and Holiday parries it away. That one was hit with pace. The rebound at Malengo will miss it out of bounds. This is the best opportunity right yep. now. Yeah, it certainly is. Here you're going to see it. He tees it up right outside the 18. The ball just gets trapped back. And Chattanooga holds on to possession. He's got a little bit of space, and he's going to take this one. Holiday sees it late, but he reacts really well, makes the save, and gets out of there. Yeah, that's got to be so tough as a goalkeeper through traffic. You can see he kind of sets his feet just late, and that's why the save looks reactionary. But that's really tough to do when there's a lot of traffic in front of you. Anderson almost picked that one off. Boy, if he did, he was going to roll it back to Ariaga and then spin out of there, John. Yeah, and he's got such pace to get back around the, of course, the center backs right there. Holiday already with a big time save. That one was hit with pace in. Look, this surface you can eat on. You have the great honor of playing on this, Emily Gray. You know how this might be the best field in the world, quite frankly. I mean, you can almost say that. But that one was hit with pace. Good save by Holiday off the bounce. Here comes North Carolina FC trying to make something happen. Dancing around. Good shot. Carried away there by Aviles. One back by Perez. Oh, Chris Lou Young was making a perfect run. Now Chattanooga on the counter. Job defensively. Perez somehow keeps that one in bounds. 
Chattanooga head coach thought it was out of bounds. I don't think it ever did roll over, though, John. I thought it stayed in bounds. Yeah, it did stay in bounds. And then once again, you just see that pressure from NCFC. Rafa just gets a little bit of space, and he's he takes that shot enough times, Dean, he's going to eventually find the back of the net. Rafa Mensingen, one of four players acquired from Chattanooga, as we say hello to the great fans of Chattanooga Red Wolves SC, the quality club. Christian Liu Young looking for Olex Anderson. Cervania's on the other side. They'll miss Cervania. Nobody at the top of the 18, which might have been a good idea with Cervania taking two players with him. The top of the 18 was open. So hard to argue about that pass. I know you weren't happy with it, John, but when Cervania takes two with him, that was the right spot to put it. They well, just needed to make that run. Absolutely, and you did have Rafa coming behind Cervania. Olex Anderson, quick turn. A lot of good pressure here from NCFC, but we talked about it, right? Cervania, as you mentioned, took two players with him, left the space open at the top of the 18. Rafa just couldn't get there. And then you see how quick Olex Anderson can turn on a ball like that and just play it into space. Yeah, and for, for a number nine like Olex, he get, getting on the ball early in a game is so important and creating two chances right up back to back, that's so important for him moving forward in this game. Chattanooga. Quickly on the attack again. That was Kraft with a little touch. Kraft's making a really good run down the middle. And also making a really good run was Tejera. But it'll come back to North Carolina FC. We talk about the great fans of Chattanooga. I do want to tell you that the Chattanooga Red Wolves are back home at CHI Memorial Stadium on April 29th for a League One matchup versus Sam Stockley, another former broadcast partner of mine and Lexington Sporting Club on wine and whiskey night and a Cinco de Mayo tilt versus South Georgia Tormenta on May 5th. Wine and whiskey night. I might be in for that. How about Diet Coke night? We got, we got Diet Coke night, anybody? <laughs> yeah, I was probably a little too excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> Throw in now for North Carolina FC. Carolina FC started the season a tough loss here at home to Tormenta, but then came back and beat Sam Stockley's team two to one. Lost in the Open Cup, tough one in extra time, almost pushing that one to penalty kicks to Loudon United from USL Championship. Came back with a 1-1 tie against the Charlotte Independents, and then went on the road and got a massive win over a perennial power in this league, Union Omaha. And that's the kind of win that builds confidence. Confidence is king. Yeah, it certainly does. And another confidence win would be <laughs> taking down Chattanooga tonight as they've never been able to beat this team. And, and NCFC is a different team. Yeah, can you, you can see early there's a pretty decent balance to possession for both sides. Chattanooga had a spell, now NCFC is finding their footing. And I think we'll start to see as the game goes on, spaces open up in transition. And I think both teams will benefit from that. See a long ball, trying to find Cervania. Cervania has featured on a USL League One Team of the Week and has really settled in as that all-important 10, which is something that North Carolina FC has been missing. He's taken on that role. You played with Dabinia. You know the importance of playing with a great 10. Yeah, a number 10 is so important for for a team going forward. I mean, you can see with Cervania, he has a good relationship with Perez here where they kind of interchange a little bit and form a relationship. Um, he has the authority to move around the pitch as he as he sees and create chances for the team. Ariaga, quick touch to Olex Anderson. Olex Anderson is offside. I thought it was such a great play from Ariaga. I didn't get a good look at where Olex Anderson was. Yeah, and you see the play just kind of build up here. The ball just gets left for Ariaga, and he just pulls it, but Anderson is just a step offside when he gets what? that. Oh, I didn't see that person come in the... <laughs> wow. Yeah. That was something. Yeah. I mean, I guess on the first touch, when you go back and look, maybe we didn't know where that player was because you saw him step up, you know, but, man, he looked onside. 
Here's a good squared ball. Holiday a little bit in no man's land, and Navarro with a world-class sliding tackle right there. Well, that is what Daniel Navarro will do for you right there. Such a dangerous play for Chattanooga, and Holiday had slipped a little bit and fallen down, but he was able to recover, and Navarro shut it down. Mentigan slicing and dicing. He went around a couple Chattanooga players like they were cones, and then Mentigan loses it. Now here's Nelson Flores Blanco. That great left foot takes the shot. That'll go into the crowd of the Oak City supporters. And then stuff there and here we'll look at see. the offside here, Emily. Yeah, we'll see this offside flag again. Ariaga takes the touch and then slips. He's he's onside for me for sure. I think it maybe was a premature flag on Perez. Maybe he was in an offside position and maybe affecting the play. So um, that might have been what the official was seeing on the play. Look at the feet from Rafa, just to get around two defenders there and just provide space for him. Take a little nutmeg with that cake. Yes. <laughs> All right, Emily, who is the queen of the nutmegs in practice for the North Carolina Courage? Ooh, it was Dabinia, for sure. Um, I would say now it's probably her Brazilian um, counterpart, um, Caroline. Yep, okay. That makes sense. They yeah. enjoy doing that. I, we don't see too many of those in training because uh, sometimes the boss gets mad <laughs> <laughs> if you do that too much. But um, yeah, Caroline, she has all the tricks and she pulls them out every once in a while. Vara and Garcia kind of flip flop here for the moment. Back in shape here, Navarro. Really good touch by Perez. Lou Young keeps it to Anderson. Anderson. Anderson stays with it. Anderson. Olex Anderson. Everything but the final quality finish with some accuracy there. Yeah, it's an unreal turn from him in the middle of the field. NCFC's finding a lot of success on this right side, forming a little bit of a triangle with Lou Young, Perez, and Olex there. He just needs to find that final ball. I, he got excited, saw the net, and he's number nine, wants to score, but I think I think he's got to dish that one off there. Yeah, Cervania was coming right in on the left-hand side. If you just play a nice little square ball to him, that would have been an easy goal. Yeah, 3v2, you got to make the most of it. But sometimes it's hard to give that ball up. Yeah, when made you're- such a nice turn, right? When you're the number nine driving, you see that goal gets nice and big. It's, it's tough, it's tough. You don't want your striker to pass up those opportunities, but at the same time, you, you gotta you gotta balance that and maybe find the extra pass there. Good little move, middle of the park here by Chattanooga. Both teams have looked dangerous at times. Holiday had to make a big time save, and after that great nutmeg from Mensigan, pretty good dangerous opportunity, and then Oleg Anderson around the 18, just not been able to get it on goal. Cut it out of there by Navarro. But Navarro's everywhere. <laughs> I mean, he is off to a great start in this one. Yeah, both him and Garcia, I mean, such strong players back there, such vision and awareness for positioning. They know exactly where to sit to be on the back of the heels as the, the forward line really starts to push up. Here they are, Garcia, back to Navarro. Flores Blanco, automatic, right in for John Bradford at the left back, unless he's on international duty. That looked like a handball, and everybody here saw it, but the man in the middle did not. So they'll play on. Play it back. What are you seeing, John, right now? Well, even as Emily said, I mean, just a lot of possession from both teams. You know, it definitely seems like Chattanooga's trying to play that long ball over the top, but NCFC is having nothing to do with that there. And NCFC on the other side is using Anderson in that really quick turn to get space around the back four. He's just got to lay that ball off and give some other people opportunities. 
Emily, I have no idea how he did not slide the word beautiful in there. He managed <laughs> not to. 23rd minute, we're almost halfway through. All right, it's coming, it's coming, I feel it. This is about the time where I will want an idea as well. What do you think so far? Let's talk about the visitors from Chattanooga, Emily. What are you seeing from them? Yeah, I was just about to say they have a, definitely a methodical way to their possession. It's very intricate build up from them um, compared to NCFC. They want to possess the ball and slowly build up through the lines. Um, and it's working out here. Yeah, indeed it is. Right on cue. And knocked out of bounds. It'll be a throw in near the corner flag. Jackson. So throw in here for Chattanooga. Showing for a moment there was Paoli. Good job by Maldonado. Now Ariaga. Ariaga is fouled and will stay with North Carolina FC. 24 minutes in, no score. Friday night, USL League One action, North Carolina FC, Chattanooga Red Wolves FC. Dean Linke reunited with the beautiful man who was my broadcast partner for, I think, like the first nine years back in the Carolina Railhawks day. And so proud to have the talented Emily Gray, Virginia Tech superstar, now in her second season with the North Carolina Courage. Right side, back across again to Lou Young. Shot from distance, denied there by Ariaga, who's also had a really good game. Ariaga's gotten stronger. He is bigger and stronger this year. Yeah, it makes such a difference when you're that number eight, kind of a double six role. Um, it's so important to be physically strong in there and not get bumped around because um, you have to be the aggressor sometimes. and and initiate that with your opponent. Yeah, and I love what Ariaga did there because he gave the ball away in the midfield, but he worked really, really hard to get back and win that ball back for NCFC. How about the big announcement that Chelsea and Wrexham will play in Chapel Hill and that NCFC will play Sunderland on the 21st with the Courage hosting the Washington Spirit on the 22nd. Tickets for the Sunderland game are on sale now and you can go to the website, that's huge. And then in the middle of all that, there's the big $1 million 7v7 tournament that's taking place at the soccer park in early June. A lot of great things happening. Here is Kristen Lou Young making things happen. Servania staying with it. Oh, good idea. Good ball from Lou Young as well. It just popped up the wrong way on Cervania. I'll tell you what, Lou Young, he's had, a, he's had a great start to this game as well, up and down the right-hand side here. I'm a big fan of Lou Young. Tahara. Staying with it now is Paoli. How about all those games, though, including the million-dollar thing? I think Heather O'Reilly's going to try to win a million bucks. Yeah. So, you know, I'm an Arsenal fan, so the whole Chelsea thing, you know, I, I mean, it's good. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I would love to go see that game and just the fact that it's coming to North Carolina here and so many great games uh, around that was really awesome. Well, even bigger is Sunderland playing here as well. And... According to our VP of Broadcasting and the King of Kings, Jorge Acuna, they have, may have more announcements coming. They're not messing around. North Carolina Courage, North Carolina FC, they're making things happen. I'll have to pull up on Netflix, Sunderland, until I die again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great series, wasn't it? Yeah, well done, Emily. Really, the only thing they're missing in all of that is what Chattanooga's doing on their next home game, the wine and whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> you just keep bringing that up, Dean, don't you? <laughs> I'm sorry. You should ask to call that game. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the 
Navarro. Maldonado gives it right back. I don't know, Emily, if you've been able to spot, spend any time with Mikey Maldonado, but I find him fascinating, and I talked to John Bradford about it. I mean, on the field, he is a bulldog, right? I mean, he wins every tackle and everything else, but then off the field, when you talk to him, I mean, he's the sweetest cherry pie, really nice guy. Yeah, I haven't had the chance to meet him just yet. Um, I know we have a couple events coming up with, with the men's team to get to know them a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, watching him play, just in the first few games this season, he, he sits in front of the back line and, and he's a protector, like you said, a bulldog. Um, so it's, it's, it's nice to watch him play. Covers a lot of ground, too, which you love to see in your 6-8 your combo back there. Yeah. Particularly the way they like to move Ariaga forward a little bit more. I mean, he really is the man in front of those back four. Here's Perez. He'll square it over to Nelson Flores Blanco. Trying to switch it back to Perez. Perez with the left foot, nice and soft. Perhaps a little bit too cheeky there. I don't know if John Bradford will be in love with that play, but Young wins it back. Good job by Young. Young wins a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina FC. He does a great job there being patient. He knows that ball's not rolling over the end line. And uses his body well to earn the corner. Yeah, nice work, as you said, Emily. Just really just staying patient, staying in front of the ball, and winning that corner here for NCFC. Minute 29. Corner kick for the home team. Wakeman Soccer Park is rocking on a Friday night. Driven in, that's a great ball. And finds the head. I think that was Rafa. That in a moment. Yeah, it was Mets again, and the shot from Maldonado, not known for that. Bombs one, that one was hit well. Well, when you have that much space at the top of the 18, I mean, you have to take the shot, but just can't get his head over it, and sails wide over the crossbar. Minute 30. Don't miss a minute of action in 2023, whether your club is on the road or at home. Catch nearly every second of USL League One action on ESPN Plus. As we got a foul here, Garcia will earn it. ESPN Plus, the home to USL, MLS, La Liga, La Bundesliga, UFC, and so much more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. We're gonna have a yellow card. And the yellow card, it's going to Chattanooga, right? To Hera, I think. Can't really see what happens there, but based on the reaction, looks like a maybe inadvertent elbow to the face. Just based on the, the reaction from Garcia there. Tahera got the yellow card, I believe, right? Yeah, so Tahera in the books for the yellow. As we're at minute 31. Stay with us at halftime. Always fun to take a look around USL League One. We'll have news and notes courtesy of Mr. USL League One, the great Brian Ware, will remind you about games coming up this weekend. And depending if North Carolina FC can somehow get their first ever win against Chattanooga and what happens the rest of the league, they could be top of the table. Here's Olex Anderson. That was Nelson Flores Blanco. And Nelson Flores Blanco, that went off the back of the Chattanooga defender. Nelson Flores Blanco made all of that happen. Yeah, he certainly did. Look at this nice run right between the heart of the defense for Chattanooga. Nice step over right there and just plays the ball through to Anderson. A nice ball back to Perez, but he just can't. Defense blocks him right there. Yeah, it was actually Nelson Flores Blanco both. He had the pass and the shot. Here's Perez. Send it far side, trying to find Navarro. And they'll say off of Navarro. Yeah, and here again, we take a look at this last chance. Nelson Flores Blanco driving, letting the ball do the work there, continuing his run forward, and the ball's just slightly behind him, and he Hits the back of a Chattanooga defender. Well done, though, from NCFC. Well done from Nelson Flores Blanco. 
Jaden Cervania, no options. Sometimes you need to go backwards to go forward, and that's exactly what North Carolina FC does. Ariaga on the far side. Rafa Mensigan looking to have a banner day against his former team. He'll get it back. Rafa Mensigan and denied by Aviles. How about that play and that pass from Olex Anderson? Emily, break it down here. That was a tremendous play. Yeah, Olex Anderson, he's he's around everything that's happening for NCFC right now. But Rafa, this is his third time cutting inside from Nice trickery there to scoop it around the defender. Continues his run. NCFC have been doing that all game long, playing, passing and moving, passing and moving, and just unlucky. Slips on the shot. And at least he puts it on target. Really like the combination play, beautiful man, right now. Yeah, Anderson, too. I mean, sometimes you just got to give that ball up a nice little back heel right into the path of Rafa. And, uh, you know, shoo. There we go again. Perez, he cannot bite on Perez. Here's Olex, Olex. He's gonna shoot till he can't shoot anymore. Big sliding tackle. Nelson Flores Blanco, one back the way of Chattanooga. Chattanooga bending but not breaking, and they can be dangerous in transition. Navarro somehow keeps that one in bounds. Maldonado, a rare loss, just had it ripped. Now watch this, ooh, Chattanooga missed an opportunity to switch the point of attack over to Lombardi, who was making a nice run. Yeah, I mentioned before Chattanooga being methodical in the way that they build up, but they're almost being too patient. They need to capitalize when NCFC loses the ball and take advantage of the space going forward. Totally agree. But on the flip side, NCFC does a great job of getting numbers behind the ball quickly, so it's definitely tough to balance there for Chattanooga. What a play from the ball. Both of those plays, and now he got kicked from behind. If he went down right there, he would have got the whistle. Navarro talking to his back line, basically saying, look, if I'm going to win not one but two balls, you got to come up there and join me. Yes, Give me an outlet. Two fantastic tackles. And he's always thinking of pushing that ball up forward after he wins that ball. He's so confident back there in winning the ball, he was looking for the, the outside pass. Alex Anderson. Oh my goodness, the flag stays down. Olex denied by Aviles. Now that time I thought he was offside by a mile and the flag stayed down. No, that was, a, that was an incredible run by Olex Anderson there. And a nice early ball by Maldonado. The center backs were so stretched out. Hopefully we get a replay here. Yeah, the center backs are in build-up phase, so they're so stretched out. NCFC wins the ball quickly and his first ball forward is the vertical ball. On there, you can't really tell. He does look a little offsides there. He does. <laughs> well, Avila has made a fantastic save. He got big. He really came out and took away any opportunity for, uh, for a shot there. Great work for the goalkeeper. Here's Ariaga. Aviles has come up with a couple big saves. Holiday's also been great, so both goalkeepers outstanding in this one, keeping it at zeros. Perez, good touch in! Oh! Rafa just missing. Boy, the touches are fantastic right now for North Carolina FC. Well, I mean, this is beautiful one-touch soccer. I mean, you, this is exactly how the game is supposed to be played. Look at North Carolina FC just push this ball forward. A nice little give and go here. He plays the ball. Rafa plays it back into space. And he just can't hit that post on the outside. But great work for North Carolina FC. Perez to Rafa and just misses that post. It's fun to watch, isn't it? Alvarez? Yeah, I mean, he had Alvarez beat and he was frozen. So I think uh, I think that slight deflection on the return pass from Perez just caught him a little bit off guard. Lombardi, Perez, good little touch to Savania. North Carolina FC playing with confidence. They got a big 2-1 win at Omaha for their first ever win against the Nebraska club. They're now 1-3-2. and two. Rafa Mentigan converted a PK in the third minute after Anderson was fouled in the box. Louis Perez scored late in the first half, and then they held on. And as Cervania is still down, that's one of the things that John Bradford said that he wants out of this team that he hasn't seen yet, and it's kind of been part of the story the last couple of years. He wants a full 90. So if you're up 2-0, he basically said, why not 3-0? 
right? Why not close it out, Emily? Yeah, and the other key that they had for this game was finishing chances, and I think that they really need to make sure that they're capitalizing here because this is like three, four in a row. Um, not clear-cut chances, maybe one or two of them are, but they need to take advantage of them because in the 90, you don't know how many you're going to get. And like you said, they get so stretched with some of these chances that they can get hit on the counterattack really quickly. All right, John, with apologies, already proof that unlike you, Emily Gray reads my notes right there, dropping in both keys for North Carolina FC. <laughs> That's it. That's it right there. I do my homework. <laughs> Here's Cervania over to Ariaga. Perez. Oh, Nelson Flores wanted it about an hour ago. Oh, and he's not happy. He was wide open and wanted it. Yeah, those outside backs when they don't get high and can. wide and they don't get the ball. They're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> they took the time to make the run all the way up there and then nothing. Nothing. Paco Craig leads Miami FC into Kentucky to face Josh Winder and the reigning Eastern Conference winners, Louisville City FC. Don't miss the start of the new season of the USL on ESPN Saturday, May 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Here in this one in Cary, Wake Med Soccer Park, no score. Chattanooga Red Wolves FC, they find Lombardi down the left side. Lombardi with Garcia coming over. There's Mikey Maldonado. And Maldonado will find Cervania. Cervania, nice turn, good awareness. And they'll find Perez. A good decision by Perez because you would have thought Ariaga was open, but they made the close and he wasn't open, so that would have been picked off. Yeah, and as you said, Maldonado just sits behind the back four and really has done such a great job of collecting those balls that have been coming through and then just looking to get that ball out quickly outside. Rafa Mensigan has had his chances. Ariaga. That's what I'm talking. Last year, he would have been laying on the ground right there. He is looks like a different man out there. He's so much stronger this year. Lou Young. Right side to Lou Young. Good pick up by Aviles. I know you love goalkeepers. He's been pretty good, John. Yeah, he certainly has. He's really quick off of his line, and he senses when it's going to get behind the back four. He's really quick to get out there and snatch that ball up. Always enjoy when Chattanooga comes to town because I get to reconnect with probably my favorite boss of all time, Bill Nuttall who was the general manager of the 1994 U.S. World Cup team where I was the senior press officer. He's a consultant with Bob Martino and Sean McDaniel, the president and GM, and Bob Martino's brother. And always enjoy talking to him. The Golden Viking played in the NASL. We're going way back, right? Yeah, it, it was so funny though, Emily, even you know who Pele is, right? Yes, of course. So <laughs> I would walk in and he'd say, hey, Dean, you want to see Pele? And he'd put his hand in his pocket and go, well, there's Pele, here we Pele, get back in there. Get back in that pocket <laughs> right there. That's pretty funny, no? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> now, he could do that he's anytime, he's anywhere, he's and he's I would be rolling. So Navarro with the yellow card for the handball. Here come the Red Wolves. Good little move. That's it. Back to the ground. It'll come back to North Carolina FC. Well, he really does it on both sides of the ball, you know, on the offensive side, but right there, just playing good, strong defense to win the ball back for NCFC. Rafa is a complete player. mentioned the academy set up with John Bradford and North Carolina FC. Congratulations are also in order to the U15 Chattanooga Red Wolves Academy girls on winning the USL Academy Cup in Tampa, Florida. What an incredible experience for these ladies to showcase their talent on the USL Academy stage. That is huge. 
whistle will bring it back to Chattanooga. Yeah, and just to go off of that, that win for the Chattanooga Girls Academy, it's so important that these uh, men's academies, that once they get established, they're really putting in um, funding and high-level coaching into these girls' academies, and hopefully as uh, years goes on, go on, we can start to have a similar system where it's academy to pro, and I know North Carolina FC are really putting an emphasis on that. Um, I know on our team we have, we have Brianna Pinto, who's a great representative of that, um, and the men's team have several players who are as well. So um, I hope that clubs around the country continue to put an emphasis on growing those types of programs. As Jim Rome would say, racket. Well done, Emily Gray. It is solid. That's what it's all about. That's yeah. part of the move to USL League One as well on the men's side to make that happen. Forty-fourth minute. I mean, John, it's zero-zero, but it's been entertaining. Yeah, it certainly has been entertaining, but it's, it's kind of that game that NCFC really should have a couple of goals already in. And if they're not careful, Chattanooga can really, you know, kind of strike on the counterattack and put this game on its head. Well, here is North Carolina FC yet again on the attack. Rafa Mensigan, after some great work on the right side from Louis Perez. Once again, North Carolina FC looking dangerous. Well, you make a great point. It could easily be 2-0 North Carolina FC, but it's not. Ariaga, Ariaga, uh, maybe he was thinking about hitting it. Instead, he'll get it to Nelson Flores Blanco, looking for Olex Anderson to go off the head of Ariaga and come back to Chattanooga. Minute 45. All right, it's time to spin the wheel here, Emily. One of the things we do is guess how many minutes of added time. We're going to let you go first as the, the rookie up here. Ooh, I think it'll be one. All right, fair. John? I'm going to go three. All right, I'll take two. That's perfect. I appreciate that. I think I might win. <laughs> <laughs> that was very kind. <laughs> I actually think Emily's on this yeah. one, actually. This game's been pretty clean. I mean, we did have those yellows, but one seems about right. Lou Young, well angled. A little backfield of Maldonado. You said it earlier, Emily, Lou Young's been clean. Here's Olex Anderson. Oh, yes! And how about North Carolina FC? Olex Anderson! Well, we've been saying it all first half. Anderson has done a great job of getting behind the back four of Chattanooga. And here you see it. NCFC comes out on the break. He looks up and plays a beautiful ball right there. There's the beautiful Woo! Anderson comes out. Aviles opens up his legs and Anderson puts it through the five hole, baby. Five hole special, Emily Gray. Yeah, we've been saying that North Carolina FC, they needed to capitalize on these opportunities. And Oleg said, yes, sir, it's me. Wow, you talk about manifestation, John. You just mentioned the fact that North Carolina FC will regret the day if they're not leading. And Emily, what a statement here in the final minutes of the first half. Yeah, they deserve NCFC to be up 1-0 at halftime. And yeah, great first half from NCFC. And, and Oleg Anderson deserves this goal. He's been all around the box so far this evening. And I want to look back because I think it was Maldonado that made that ball. Oh, yeah. That was beautiful yeah. ball for ball. Played right. Oh, my God. 100% Maldonado. The minute he got that ball, he looked right up. He knew exactly where Anderson was going to be, and he played it into the space. It's hard to find find a better ball serve than that one right there, right? Yeah, I mean, there's time and space for him to do so, and it's similar to the one just a few minutes ago that we were like, ooh, he might have been offsides. Um, but yeah, Maldonado, he's been great so far this half in picking out that final ball. Here's Maldonado on the touch. 1-0 North Carolina FC, as I've already told you, it's not the first time they've led. Oh, my! They could point to the spot, they will. Oh, a little reckless. 
I was just gonna say, a lead against Chattanooga is never good, and now a penalty kick coming. Well, Garcia got behind the player, and he tried to slide in at the last minute and just, just try to get that ball before he got the man. Unfortunately, he got all man, and here you're gonna see it. The ball is being played through. Garcia dives oh. in, and he comes across the player, which you never want to do, and it's a penalty. Nope. Yeah, and the Chattanooga forward, he he saw that Garcia was about to slide in and put his body across the ball. He just needs to be patient there and and just try to get his body in front of the ball and just hope that Holiday makes a save. But great and chance now for Chattanooga. And really in that moment, Emily, I mean, Holiday can come out. He can take the near post and he could just stay right there so nothing can go to the far post and just got tangled up right at halftime. So Tejera earns the PK, but he'll leave it for Riley Kraft, wearing number 98, to take the PK against Nick Holiday. Riley Kraft from Roseville, California, signed in August of 22. Also played for USL two side Des Moines, played for the Richmond Kickers. And here he goes to try to tie it. Holiday. Well, there is no better feeling than that right there as a goalkeeper. You said, I'm going to put the team on my back. I'm going to take this over. He has to pick a side. He sees the ball coming to his right. He dives as hard as he can. It's not the best penalty kick, but it is a fantastic save by Holiday. Keeps his team 1-0 right there. And it was a strong dive to that right-hand side. He was, he knew it was going there, and, and it was a strong hand as well. And quite the last play of the first half. I don't even know how much stoppage time there was. I, I don't either. Seven. I don't know who won. I think I won. <laughs> North Carolina FC is winning. It's North Carolina FC 1, Chattanooga 0. We'll be back to take a look around the league and upcoming schedule. Stay with us on ESPN+. Plus. I want to be like the pretty people on my TV. Now you can. All I need are gleaming white teeth. We can help you. Can you find the right dentist for me? Rick of Benny Associates, they do cosmetic dental. Will they hurt me? No, they're gentle. I'm terrified of pain. They're the kindest in the land. They sound great. Could you repeat their name? Rick of Benny Associates, Family Dentistry, RushandFloss.com. So, how do you like your urgent care? At Wake Med, we have urgent care just about everywhere. Urgent care that specializes in orthopedics and kids. MyCare 365, open every day of the year. Even virtual urgent care. Yup, urgent care in your jammies, on your tablet. So download the Wake Med All Access app and get urgent care that's caring, convenient, and just the way you like it. Back to Wake Med Soccer Park, Friday night special, USL League One style in North Carolina FC. Olex Anderson with a great pass from Mikey Maldonado. That's the difference of the game, 1-0. Dean Linky along with the beautiful man, John Boulier and Emily Gray. Emily, quick thoughts on what you saw here in the first half. Yeah, NCFC dominated that first half. There's no doubt about it. Created an extraordinary number of chances for only having one goal on the scoreboard. And Chattanooga, they were definitely involved in the game, but didn't create enough chances to really insert their their presence. Yeah, and finally Anderson was able to get back through the, the heart of the defense, and, and really Aviles just had played a great first half, but he opened up his legs right there at the top of the box, and he just came out a little too far, and Anderson made him pay. Take a look at some upcoming games for North Carolina FC. They'll go on the road, but 
do want to encourage you all to get tickets for May 13th and May 17th when Ford Madison and the Richmond kickers come. A lot of history, John, between North Carolina FC and Richmond. Yeah, there certainly are, and I, I think maybe some new rivalries are going to be held down. All right, that's the upcoming schedule for North Carolina FC. We'll take a look at the upcoming schedule for Chattanooga. You got the wine and whiskey game coming up on April 29th. And then they also have a home game against Union Omaha. There are no easy games in USL League One, though. No, there's certainly not. And there's a tremendous amount of travel that goes along with it as well that doesn't make it easy for these guys. So yeah, definitely a difficult schedule, but well balanced it looks like from the looks of this. As it stands right now, if they said this game was over, North Carolina FC would be in first place in USL League One. But let me tell you, when you play Chattanooga, you got to play a complete game. We'll come back and take a look around the USL halftime and carry. North Carolina FC one, Chattanooga zero. Most of us aren't going to be professional athletes. But if your goal is to finish your degree, we can help. Come to a university that puts your goals first. Bellevue University, your partner in finishing goals. Welcome back to, welcome back. Welcome back to Wake Med Soccer Park. John Boyer might be in line there for some <laughs> dipping dots. It's North Carolina <laughs> FC 1, Chattanooga Red Rose SC 0. As we'll start to take a look at the USL, as I mentioned, if it ended right now, North Carolina FC would be atop of the standings. As we take a look, North Carolina FC sitting behind the Charlotte Independents. They already got a tie against them. I do the math right there, Emily. You got that Virginia Tech degree. Three more, that put them at 10. Yeah, that would put them in first place, and that's a big difference from where they were at last year. So it's still early in the season, but a really good start if, if this result holds. Yeah, North Carolina FC had to claw and claw and claw, but now they're in a good spot where perhaps they can keep winning games, John, and earn that playoff spot. And I think it's important to win games on the road. I mean, they have a lot of games on the road where they just need to pick up either a win or some points and really just keep going up the table. Take a look at the games coming up this weekend. As you see, another Friday night game, Tormenta so good. They got a 2-0 lead. 
Saturday, Lexington SC has another home game against a Greenville team that's struggling right now. Charlotte, so that game right there, depending on what North Carolina FC will determine who at the end of the weekend will be in first place. Local rivals in Charlotte, bringing some good competition to USL League One so far this season. Uh, first and second place so far are in, right here in North Carolina, and that's pretty cool to see. So that's the scoreboard. Now the news and notes. Some key games coming up in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup as St. Louis will take on Union Omaha MLS against USL League One. That'll be incredible. Cincinnati and Louisville. That is always really good. Charleston and Charlotte. How about the matchups between Bruce Arena and Tad Ramos, one of the greatest players, one of the greatest coaches, and then Wayne Rooney taking on the Richmond Kickers and Darren Sawatsky. That's huge. Great to have Lexington now in USL League One. Yeah, it certainly is. Some great teams in the league. And, you know, I just love the U.S. Open Cup, too. There's just so many opportunities for lower-level teams to, to make their dreams come true. Big win for forward Madison, who's been struggling of late. Boy, they laid the hammer down on Greenville. Yeah, Greenville's definitely, Green, Greenville's definitely struggling so far this season, bottom of the table. But have you seen those forward Madison uniforms that came out? They're pretty cool. They're really cool. <laughs> yeah, really cool. And they've got a great following there as well. Those are the news and notes for USL League One, courtesy of Brian Ware. Green winning the player of the week for Sam Stockley's Lexington team, which is always exciting and great to see Louis Perez on the team of the week. Yeah, and I think if it keeps going this way, you might see Anderson on the team of the week this week. Maybe Maldonado. Yeah. He's been Lou good. Young. Lou Young's been good. Nelson Flores Blanco's been pretty good. Holiday. Navarro's <laughs> been good. It's the whole team. Yeah. <laughs> hey, USL League One, just make it all north. Well, tell you what, they got a lot more work to do, though. Good thing, though, is that youngins are having fun. We'll be back with more from Wake Med Soccer Park halftime. North Carolina FC 1, Chattanooga 0. I want to be like the pretty people on my TV. Now you can. All I need are gleaming white teeth. We can help you. Can you find the right dentist for me? Rick Benny Associates, they do cosmetic dental. Will they hurt me? No, they're gentle. I'm terrified of pain. They're the kindest in the land. They sound great. Could you repeat their name? Rick Benny Associates, Family Dentistry, RushandFloss.com. So, how do you like your urgent care? At Wake Med, we have urgent care just about everywhere. Urgent care that specializes in orthopedics and kids. MyCare 365 open every day of the year, even virtual urgent care. Yup, urgent care in your jammies on your tablet. So download the Wake Med All Access app and get urgent care that's caring, convenient, and just the way you like it. Back to Wake Med Soccer Park. Halftime, North Carolina FC. Olax Anderson Jr. with the only goal of the game so far. They lead Chattanooga by a score of 1-0 with Emily Gray and the beautiful man John Bouillet. I'm Dean Linky, and let's go to work and take a look at the first half highlights. We'll start with you, Emily. Yeah, and Chattanooga had plenty of chances early to start the game, a couple off of set pieces, and this was a great one here. Lombardi takes it off his chest, sets the ball up with his first touch, and he makes a great save. Yeah, and you like to see that, as we said, Holiday saw that really, really late, but he got two strong hands to the ball and he just missed the rebound. But Chattanooga was looking for that goal early. And here, NCFC are with their one of their first chances of the game. A great combination centrally between Mensigan and Perez. And it just comes off the inside of his foot. He had the goalkeeper frozen. Once again, a great opportunity for NCFC, first of many of this half. Yeah, and NCFC just kept putting pressure on Chattanooga, but here comes an opportunity 
for NCFC. As you see, Maldonado, look at this ball, just plays the ball right through the back of the defense into Olex Anderson, right between the legs of Aviles, and NCFC's on the board. And Olex, that entire half, was just doing a tremendous job of being on the back shoulder of Williams. Uh, he was just a nuisance back there, just running in behind constantly, constantly the whole half, and hopefully he can continue to do so. It's gotta be the hair. <laughs> and just when you thought they were going in with the goal, oh, right there, a penalty for Chattanooga. David Garcia brings him down right there in the box. He just got on the wrong side of him. And a penalty kick comes up. And who else but Nick Holliday. Look at this save. Two strong hands to the right and protects the lead for NCFC. Massive. One more look at it, Emily. Yeah, it's just a tremendous save from Nick Holliday. I mean, unreal from the 17-year-old to keep his team in this one and keep the lead going into halftime. You saw who was there for the hug, right? <laughs> Garcia, because he, he had the foul. <laughs> Thank you, my man, Nick Holliday. He's like, I owe you one. You know it. All right, special thanks again to Brian Weir for all his amazing research on USL League One. Beautiful man, John Bouillet, Emily Gray, Dean Linky back with you here for the start of the second half. Chattanooga has absolutely dominated this series. The storyline, if you joined us late, but of course all the Chattanooga fans know this, four players from Chattanooga now part of this North Carolina FC team. Three of them have featured prominently Daniel Navarro, the captain, Rafa Mensingham with game winners, and DJ Benton has played right back and left back. He had a red card a couple games ago, then had to sit out the game at Omaha, and you can't go to Omaha, get a 2-1 win, and get back in there. I mean, you kind of got to ride who's out there, and Christian Luke Young's been great. Yeah, he's been fantastic for NCFC in place of Benton. And he has a lot of experience, so there's no surprise in that. But he's been up and down that right-hand side, serving in crosses and being strong defensively. Side of the foot from Servania. Rafa to Olex Anderson. He's in again. Olex Anderson Jr. had no blue jerseys around at all. Well, a great ball from Rafa just played into the space for Anderson. But as you said, Dean, he was on an island up there with nothing but white shirts. Wow, Mexican. Good idea, I don't even know how he did that. By the way, I think we heard that it was four minutes, so none of us won. <laughs> True story. Who, uh, who was the closest? Uh, <laughs> without going over, so you, it yeah. would be you. Price is right. Showcase showdown, baby. <laughs> out of the back there by Cardona. By left. Flores Blanco. Once again, gonna come all the way back to Nick Holiday. Let's hear it from somebody who's actually experienced it. We often talk about last five, first five. First five coming out, second half, Emily. They always talk about how important that is. Can you break that down? Yeah, I mean, growing up and in college and professionally now, the big five moments are so important. Start the game, end of the half, start of the half, um, after a goal, after an injury, yellow card, anything along those lines. Um, it's so important to have your team together and um, not concede a goal in those chances, but also to push forward and score a goal during those moments. Um, it's when the game can get it's most crazy time, and um, as a team, you need to make sure that you're in tune in those moments. 
Yeah, and I love that NCFC started out with high pressure right from the beginning of the second half, really not giving them any chance to sit back and allow Chattanooga to put pressure on them. Offside, so Chattanooga will have it. What a final four minutes it was as the goal from Olex Anderson Jr. and then the penalty kick save from Nick Holiday to keep it 1-0. I think if he hits that penalty kick, which nine out of 10 times he's gonna hit it, right? That it's a sullen locker room for North Carolina FC because they had worked so hard to get that. Instead, I bet that locker room was on fire. Yeah, I'm sure it was. And I mean, we were talking about that right before halftime, how uh, Chattanooga was probably really happy to go into halftime, you know, 0-0. And then, of course, NCFC just jumped on them and, and finally was able to finish. We talked about how important finishing would be, and they were finally able to get one of the goal and then just made a defensive error that allowed Chattanooga to almost get back in the game. everybody again about the big announcement Chelsea and Wrexham in Chapel Hill on July 19th Sunderland playing NCFC on the 21st with Emily Gray's North Carolina Courage hosting the Washington Spirit on the 22nd Rafa Mensigan Olex Anderson is offside again tickets for the Sunderland game are on sale now go to NorthCarolinaFC.com and buy them up and during that time the big $1 million 7v7 tournament that is taking place at the soccer park in June. I got a lot of, in fact, even broadcast partners, Patrick Duty, who I work with, is coming to represent Indiana soccer in that. There are people coming from all over the place, that thing. Did you get a team, John? Um, I've been asked, you know, a couple of, <laughs> I had to turn down a couple of uh, opportunities. <laughs> it's been a long time since I put the gloves on. <laughs> Gloves are probably stuck together somewhere <laughs> in the closet. <laughs> Brady will play it back. This is better work here now from the Red Wolves SC. Tahara already earned a penalty kick spot. Great ball all the way across. Stay with the visitors. Left side. Back across. Still loose. Popped in the air and they go to Holiday. Boy, good spacing right here. Olex had made a good run too. Here's Rafa, and Rafa will earn a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina FC. And you just love Cervania. It's such a great first touch in the midfield to really get things moving for NCFC. Just played that ball out wide to Rafa, and NCFC attacked in numbers there, and they're gonna earn a corner kick out of it. Third minute. Curling around. Kept alive by Lou Young. That looked like a handball. Nelson Flores Blanco. This is going to be trouble here. That's going to roll out of bounds. So it'll be a throw in. Now everybody's got to get back. Look at Nelson Flores Blanco hustle. He has to. Throw in here for Brady. Goes all the way back to Williams. 
believe he played every minute of every game for Chattanooga. And Emily Gray mentioned this man's here, his experience with Trinidad and Tobago as well. Chattanooga putting double digit passes together. This turns out to be a pretty good opportunity. As chasing it down was Tahira, and it'll come back as a goal kick. Emily, you mentioned it, just Chattanooga playing really patient right now, just keeping possession of the ball, and when they get that opportunity, really taking it. Yeah, and they're only down 1-0, so they can still be that way. Eventually, they'll have to chase the game and really apply some more pressure, but uh, this man, Tahera, he's been he's been involved a lot in what they're doing. Once that build-up phase gets to the final third, he's been heavily involved, and um, wouldn't be surprised if we see him put some more opportunities on that. Yep, he was the one that earned that penalty kick. They'll find Rafa. I believe the Chattanooga fans miss him. Some Flores Blanco. Mexican. Maldonado, that wonder ball to Olex Anderson Jr. for the only goal in the final minutes of the first half. Cervania trying to be dangerous, and he earns a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina FC. Yeah, great work from North Carolina FC there, just trying to play a reverse diagonal ball to Cervania. He just couldn't get around the defender. But Cervania is playing in a really forward position right now, almost right next to Anderson, putting more pressure on the back four. Yeah, he's been everywhere. He's really committing himself to finding the ball deep, and then not, and then once the ball goes wide, to making that diagonal run and getting it behind. He's really pushing forward tonight. Minute 56, 1-0 lead. Maldonado decides to trap it. I don't know how you don't crank that. I guess it was one little bounce right in front. I think I'm cranking that. I don't care if it goes over the scoreboard. I'm just giving it a rip. Yeah, you can't wait for the players to step out on you in that situation. You're wide open top of the box on the corner. If they're going to leave you there, it's got to be a first time finish. Thank you. John never, he never agreed <laughs> with me when I made comments like that. I mean, even if you sky that one over the crossbar, you've got to give it the first shot. First time, all right. John never. <laughs> uh oh. He's on. I, I, he is on. Well said. Oh, the pass That speed is absolutely destroying the back four of Chattanooga. And Anderson, and you said it, Dean, the most unselfish play. I mean, how could you do this? Look at Anderson get behind the back four. He has space. All he's got is the goalkeeper to beat. He sees Rafa out the corner of his eye and plays a beautiful square ball. A nice, easy goal for Rafa and NS NCFC. Anderson, he's gotten in behind so many times throughout this game so far. Makes that extra pass. And, and there were two celebrations after that goal. One on the right for Anderson and one on the left for Mensigan. It's just a great team goal and unselfish play by Anderson. And a great finish as well under pressure. I don't know what that means, but do you guys have any idea? Uh, he's strong. He's, he's very strong. Rafa Mensigan. John, help me here. That was not just a nice go. It was a beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you can say it again. Okay. It was a beautiful goal. Both that goals have been beautiful, right? Yeah, that was beautiful for sure. But Chattanooga is going to be frustrated because they did have some opportunities if they could have converted and just maybe got one goal back and really kind of really got this game almost to an even place. And now they're going to really have to chase the game, like you said. I mean, yeah, they just don't have an answer for Olex Anderson, to be honest. His, his pace is just lethal, getting in behind. 
You were spot on. You and I were right together there, Emily. He had looped his run around. When that ball was served from distance, he was 100% onside. He's probably been called offside three or four times in this game, but that doesn't matter to him. He's a That's a great forwards mentality to just keep going and test, test that line every single time. Chattanooga Red Wolves are back home at CHI Memorial Stadium on April 29th for a League One matchup versus Lexington Sporting Club on Wine and Whiskey Night and a Cinco de Mayo tilt versus South Georgia Tomenta on May 5th. So April 29th and May 5th, double down and support Chattanooga, who's getting ready to make some changes to try to get back into this game. Alex Anderson Jr. looking again. Flag is down again <laughs> this time. This time, not so unselfish. I think that was a shot. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong, but. Well, I mean, he just got it. He got underneath it. You know, I mean, the really awesome part about that is, again, Rafa made a fantastic early run into the box, and Anderson was trying to play that ball early. He just had no control of the pass. And Chattanooga really needs to sure up what we call rest defense. Like they're, they're doing a great job building out of the back and being patient, but their shape is so large that they don't have a good rest defense sitting in front of them and being prepared. Don't miss a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of the USL League One action on ESPN Plus, the home to the USL, La Liga, the Bundesliga, UFC, and more. Sign up today at plus.espn.com. Thank you, John. We got some changes coming up as Summersaw and McLaughlin will come in for North Carolina C at the next opportunity. Meanwhile, for Chattanooga, they will bring in number 11, Marsh. Siobhan Marsh. It'll be McLaughlin first. And so McLaughlin's going to come into the game. And Raheem Summersaw will come in to give a little bit more bite. Fans, put your hands together for two NCFC subs coming out of the game number seven, Luis Arriaga, and coming in for Luis number 44, Raheem Somersault. Also coming out of the game number nine, Olex Anderson. All right, Alex so. Up number 19, Garrett McLaughlin. So Olex Anderson saluting the crowd. Chattanooga and John Bradford, he knows this. I, I've not hidden the fact that I want Olex Anderson to play 90, and he doesn't play 90. Olex Anderson looks to be accepting it a little bit better, of course, because he's had a fantastic game, right, with a goal and an assist. But, man, when he's playing that well, just keep him out there, Emily. Yeah, but it, if he knows he's only going to go 60, he's sure making the most of it. There I mean, he's putting, in, he's putting in quite a shift, and... McLaughlin, he's, he's a nice number nine as well. Gives you a little bit of a different look, but might be a good one to close out a game when you're up 2-0. That's well said, because McLaughlin just relentless pressure defensively. Really good two-way center forward off the head of Navarro, another former Chattanooga player. That's part of the storyline today. Indeed. Navarro, there's Somersault. So, Somersault now a little different player than Ariaga, more like Maldonado. So they're really saying, all right, if you're going to go through us, good luck. Good run by Nelson Flores Blanco. Fair play by Cardona. Emily Gray, a really key part of and. North Carolina Courage winning the Challenge Cup last year. Emily, I thought you were brilliant in the Challenge Cup. Great start to your campaign. And how about the Irish superstar Denise O'Sullivan with the game tying goal down in Orlando to start the Challenge Cup? Yeah, the couple of us back home, we were watching that game and we were talking. Orlando's been giving up some stoppage time goals lately, so we knew there was one coming and we we had some goals coming as well. Uh, I think things are starting to click a little bit and hopefully we can start to get some results. But yeah, Sully, she's she's an incredible leader and uh, such an important piece of our, our club as a whole. The junkyard dog, Denise O'Sullivan. Shot 
denied there by Garcia. That'll be a foul called against Chattanooga. Perez down for North Carolina FC. That'll allow me one more time to again salute that U15 Chattanooga Red Wolves Academy girls team on winning the USL Academy Cup in Tampa. Amazing experience. Great job by USL. Well, USL is just bursting at the seams. Teams are lining up to join USL League One, USL League Two, USL Championship. They've got one more year to settle in into another great women's league that I think will be awesome for the continued development on the women's side. Yeah, the USLW League. Or what is it, maybe the Super League? I'm not sure. Yeah, come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yellow card issued against Chattanooga. tell Chugger you were doing this game? <laughs> I did not tell him I was doing this, but uh, I saw Anson Dorrance outside before Red the Wolf game. He was Seeking watching North a game uh, elsewhere North in Wake Med Soccer Park, and, and he said he's having dinner with Chugger next week, so um, I told him to, to say hello for me. All right, well done. Chugger Adair, the head coach of the Hokies. I think I just saw he got a contract extension. A bunch yep. of Hokies coaches did. Yep. Your women's basketball team pretty good. Uh, yeah, they had a great season. I was hoping they'd bring us our national championship. McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Ruffle! Well, no Anderson, no problem. How about that? McLaughlin gets a little bit of space, and just again, he sees Rafa making a run to the far post. Here you're gonna see the play build up all the way back from Holiday, and this ball just falls into the space of McLaughlin. He pulls the ball back, he sees Rafa at the far post, and Rafa buries that in the far post. What a goal for NCFC. All three of them. Another team goal from NCFC starts from Holiday, ends with Rafa. A great finish, honestly, under a little bit of pressure there again. And what an impact from McLaughlin. Yeah, I don't think we're giving Holiday enough credit either. How about the distribution from the back, Emily? <laughs> you gotta love when it starts with the goalkeeper. He's looking like Ederson out there, starting from the back. Oh, no, can't do that, can't do that, can't do that. <laughs> Rafa Mensigan, two goals against his former team, hitting the storyline, story and NCFC never, I don't, not even a tie, they've never beaten, I think that's true, I mean, never beaten Chattanooga, and now they got a 3-0 lead, and as Chick Hearn, the late great Los Angeles Lakers announcer would say about this time, the Jello's jiggling. <laughs> Espinoza coming into the game. Mentioned the USL, the W League is the amateur league. We had the Courage U23 team going into the season and then launching down the road, just like you said, the USL Super League. Launching soon. General substitution in the 67th minute of play. Coming up with game number 10, Mayo Malengo coming in number 99, Mo Espinosa. Mo Espinosa coming into the game. That was part of the plan, but Chattanooga's got a whole lot of wood to chop. John Bradford put it pretty simply. John and Emily, he basically said, look, I have watched Rafa and Navarro and even DJ terrorize our team forever. And Steve Malik and the ownership group, Kirk Johnson, who heads up soccer for both this team and the Courage, got together and said, we're gonna make some moves. We are gonna 
build our team, and they build it with this guy here, number 14, and then Navarro, Benton has been solid, and then our backup goalkeeper, who probably won't play a ton because Holiday is there, but you, you, know, you need to have a solid backup. They also got Saunders from Chattanooga as well. Yeah, I think this is where we thank Chattanooga <laughs> for, for the talented players at NCFC. I mean, Rafa has just put on a clinic tonight, and Navarro's been so good in the back. And you got to give Chattanooga a lot of credit for developing. I mean, these are some older veteran players as well, but I mean, the system is good. Chattanooga's been great, and they've got that great fan base. But that's what happens at, at this level. There's always movement, every team. That's part of minor league soccer. This one sent across. Preston Pop. Gonna get a run. And so is Shaq Adams. So two offensive players coming in. I like that mentality. And while wow, they're on North Carolina FC. This is where Nick Halliday is really starting to think about the shutout. <laughs> He's like, okay, I think we have the game in the books, but now I want to get a shutout. Free kick opportunity coming now. You see Nelson Flores Blanco lay down with the four man wall. Mo Espinoza. Leave it. Pretty good shot, but over the crossbar. Looked like Holiday knew what he was doing there. As Justin Pop and Shaq Adams coming in for North Carolina FC. These are two attacking players, Emily. Yeah, it looks like Rafa might be getting a curtain call here, so just as Anderson did. Great performance from him tonight. Greater than great. Outstanding. And sometimes in the game when you're up 3-0 and you think, okay, we have this one, we have the three points in the bag, you want to put attacking players in to see if they can go gain some confidence and grab a goal themselves. I like that too. Yeah, you never want to talk about injuries, but they do come up in games and you know who's going to step in if one of them actually goes down. Yeah, we talked about it. it's a long season, so these guys all need to be ready to contribute to the team. So off these subs, Adams, good little touch. McLaughlin has made his mark, he'll foul. We mentioned USL Championship. Miami FC will head to Kentucky to take on Louisville City FC. Don't miss the start of the new season of the USL on ESPN Saturday, May 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Tell you what, Maldonado is such a physical presence in the middle of the field. He does not give up on tackles. Here's that tackle again. Looks like he gets tripped up here. And then he kind of goes to grab the ball with his hands or just dive for it and kind of tangles um, Maldonado, Maldonado up. So a little bit of delay here, but it's 3-0. Up on the big screen, now we can hear the longtime PA announcer talking about NCFC and Sunderland right here. July 21, that's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah, this is going to be a packed out place for that game, Dean. I think so. 
You see the yellow card going to Marsh. Chattanooga, there's Somersault, doing exactly what John Bradford wanted him to do off the bench. A nice, nice player to bring off the bench. Had a good year last year. Bringing Mikey Maldonado limits his time. <laughs> Another dangerous opportunity here is Pop getting into the game and was open there on the far post. Yeah, he certainly was. I thought it was going to be four just like that. Pop slid in, and I don't know if that went off the defender, but just missed the goal right there. Tough touch there for Espinoza. Let's take a look at that last opportunity for North Carolina FC. Adams puts in a nice ball. McLaughlin slides in and Pop just barely misses it. I can't tell if there was a deflection or not, but here's here's the tackle there from Cervania. It looks like he might have, he definitely got the ball, but he might have uh, raked his shin as well going through. Actually, I think he also got hits to the mouth there, lip area. There might be some blood even. It's getting a yellow card. NCFC yellow in the 75th minute of play to number 10, Jaden Cervania. Cervania with the yellow. Boy, Jaden Cervania, though, he is a workhorse. I mean, he is doing it on both sides of the ball. Such a physical player, really just likes to get stuck in and win tackles. He's got great vision. As soon as he gets the ball at his feet, he's looking up to see where he can play that ball. Maldonado. Good professional foul there. 76th minute. Carolina FC back here on May 13th against Forward Madison and May 17th against Richmond. Good ball sent in, headed out of there. One back by Chattanooga. Back the other way. Well, your juices are always running as a professional when you play against your former team. I mean, and a lot of times it's kind of a hero or ghost situation. You come out flying too much and not get it done. And I would say Navarro and Mexican have been the opposite. They have been outstanding. Yeah, they've they've been they've been great tonight, and um, they show their experience as well when they play, um, especially at the back with Navarro. Um, he leads this team very well, and Rafa served himself nicely as well. How about it, fans? Let's join the Renegados and OCS and make some noise for your North Carolina FC. Decent crowd here, but I think it's important to get the word out that North Carolina FC is the real deal now. Oh, absolutely. As I said, if you win this game, you're at the top of the table and, and it's such a, a better season than what they were having last year on the field. Yeah, last season was uh, quite disappointing for them. Um, but I think they've also built out this roster, as we mentioned before, to compete and to be in first place throughout this season. Laughlin, great ball back. Boy, a good idea trying to find Adams. He's a really good passer, McLaughlin. Yeah, he certainly is, and Shaq Adams is causing all kinds of problems on the back four. Just really hanging on the, the center back right there and then just making that quick move to try to get past him. Player cramping up for Chattanooga. It's number 24, Andrew Paoli, Mountain View, California, Bay City's FC. NCFC season ticket members will have a special opportunity to purchase tickets for the match. 
And even up 3-0 in this half, NCFC's attacking with a lot of numbers, like you saw there. McLaughlin played that ball through, but there were several players from behind that were committing themselves to go forward. And, and that shows the hunger that Coach Bradford's instilling in his side to score goals and finish chances. You know, and you like to see it too, Emily, because a lot of times when you're up 3-0, and you start to kind of settle back, but they're still winning the 50-50 balls in the midfield. They're still putting a lot of pressure on Chattanooga. Yeah, it's so important to have that same attitude toward the, the duels and committing yourselves to go forward. Obviously, as we wind down here in the final five minutes, you want to protect that a little bit more, but um, I think still the game's 3-0. If it was two, it's the most dangerous lead in soccer, right. but three I think is pretty safe. Um, obviously, we want the shutout, but... Looks like Paoli's going to come out as they'll bring in Laborio Jr. for Chattanooga. Meanwhile, going back to our thoughts on the academy, Preston Pop, it's worth reminding folks that he was a former member of the NCFC Academy, scoring 25 goals in 28 matches in 2017. Acquired in free agency in December, previously with the Rochester New York FC team. And in comes Yet another sub for Chattanooga is number 13, Felipe Laborio Jr. out of Chula Vista, California, played with Cal United. It's not going to be the only sub. As also coming into the game will be Mensa, Papa Mensa, way of Ghana. 81st minute. I believe this is his first appearance for the club or he's the new signing for them. Good stuff, Emily. <laughs> Servania, McLaughlin, McLaughlin, McLaughlin denied. Aviles with the save. Andrew Paoli coming in number 13, Felipe Laborio. Also coming out number 29, Alex Tejera coming in 20. Rapata Mensa, 80th minute, Chattanooga. Turnover. Navarro. Every once in a while that will happen from number five and now a yellow card to Maldonado, I believe. Maldonado's had a few of those, so, yeah. NCFC yellow in the 82nd minute to number 15, Mikey Maldonado. I called my first Railhawks game with the beautiful man, John Bouillet, in 2007. In 2023, he finally gets a shirt. Emily Gray, one game, one shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to someone in this. <laughs> 82nd minute, good shot, but right at Holiday. Blanco, Maldonado, popped over McLaughlin's head, one back by Brady in Chattanooga. A little bit of game management here now by North Carolina FC, which is Part of the game, Emily, with a 3-0 lead. Yeah, it looks like they're finishing out the game, maybe. Yeah, right now, it looks like a 4-2-3-1, but it has looked like a 4-4-2 at times with Cervania stepping up next to McLaughlin and making the lines really tight. Yeah, North Carolina FC has no problem with Chattanooga making back passes. They'll go forward now here. Espinoza over to Brady. Madonia. That was close. I've seen McLaughlin pick those off. Yeah, I'm a 
McLaughlin's tracking back right with that last defender and just waiting for that ball to come across. John, great to be back with you. I know you ran off and had some beautiful little baby girls and that type of thing, but nice to have you back in the booth. Yeah, it's great to be back here, Dean, uh, to call, call a couple of games this year and to be back here with you. I know we've uh, we got quite a history together doing this thing. Long, long time, a lot of fun times. We back in the radio studio. Seen a lot of games here. Emily, before you were born, I was calling the WSA Courage games here, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> what year were you born? 2000. Oh, gosh. Right to the gut. I feel old. Yeah. <laughs> this stadium was built because of the original Curry. That's why it was built. You knew that, right? I have heard that, actually, yes. Second year under former Tar Heel Marsha McDermott, they won the WSA title in Atlanta, beating Mia Hamm and Abby Wambach's Washington team. Went from worst to first, An incredible story. Carla Overbeck, one of the all-time greats, scored in the semifinal with child in that game. How about that? Yes, that's incredible, <laughs> that's something. The pioneers of this game for us. That child is now a setter on the University of North Carolina volleyball team, Carson Overbeck. All the way across, oh, Nelson Flores Blanco did just enough to stop. That's a good ball there from Chattanooga. Let's take a look at all three goals. Let's go to work, Emily Gray, break them down. Uh, here's the first one, nice ball by Maldonado. First of many on the night, and it just puts it through the legs, nutmegs in for his first goal. Olex Anderson, Jr., second goal here, beautiful man. Yeah, and here we come just to get around him. Plays over to Rafa, a beautiful, beautiful, unselfish pass right there to Rafa and the second goal for NCFC. And goal number three for Emily Gray. And off the bench, McLaughlin gets in behind, continuing what Olex Anderson started in the game, cuts back, plays it across. Nice finish for his second goal of the game. Great job by our crew under producer Kyle Lang. Pretty sure Ian Lang's on replay, might have that wrong. Got the aforementioned King of Kings, Jorge Acuna, Kyle Lang, Ryan Lutz, Ian Lang, Ryan Moeller, Brian Ware, and Ethan Ferrara are a great crew. Thanks for all the work they do. John Bradford, not done making changes. This one will be a defensive one as Fernandez will get a run. As I said, he has been great, but right now Navarro and Garcia Kind of that combo, but Fernandez is going to be a guy that's going to get his minutes, going to need to get his minutes and need to play a big role. Yeah, center back duo is one of the most important duos in the game. Um, obviously, throughout the lineup, it's important to have connections and good partnerships, but center back is critical to the success of the team and, and getting some shutouts. So Coach Bradford's going with the partnership that he thinks is best, at least for the time being. And it's going to make a change. And it'll come in for Sylvania. That's smart. Sylvania with the yellow card. Put your hands together for your number 10. Now they may go with five in the back. There's a good chance they'll go with five in the back. John, as he's more of a center back. Yeah, and, and I mean, as Sylvania's coming off too, I mean, you just can't say enough about this player. I mean, he's had a fantastic game. As we said, uh, great vision, winning a lot of balls in the midfield. And really, as you said, Emily, too, just all over the field tonight, has the, the ability to just kind of play anywhere and really just goes out there and does it. When he came onto the field, he put five up, five in the back. Might as well, right? 3-0. Yeah, with a few minutes left, see this one out. Make sure you uh, preserve the shutout. And Cervania, again, I think we saw a mature performance from him tonight. Um, I think he's still growing and getting, uh, getting better as a pro. And uh, becoming that number 10 is a big responsibility for, for our club. And I think he put in a mature performance for that tonight. Could not agree more. And I think John Bouillet, for the second time, will agree with me when I say 
Emily Gray's put in a mature performance tonight. Big time, right, John? She certainly has. A plus, 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 plus. <laughs> And she got a shirt in the first. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one. I hope I can keep it. It really is yeah, nice. It's cozy. You get to keep it. Yeah. Nice. Along with all my other soccer gear. <laughs> so called. One zero at the half, three zero in minute ninety. I gotta admit, I have no idea, no idea of how much added time. I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna stick with three. <laughs> I think that's probably gonna be right, so I'll go two. I'll take four then. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Since the World Cup, uh, referees have been adding a lot of extra time to these games around the world. Uh, Arsenal needed eight minutes of added time today, <laughs> baby, to come back on Southampton. They needed it. Woo! Maldonado. Maldonado! <laughs> That's what he should have done on that corner kick. Right. He'll be working on those in training this week. <laughs> Six minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the front person is dedicated to them on six minutes of additional time in the second half. Six minutes. Six minutes of added time. A whole lot of exciting things to tell you about. You've got those home games coming up against Ford Madison and Richmond Kickers. You've got the Chelsea Wrexham game in Chapel Hill. You got Sunderland coming here. North Carolina Curry is their next home game. When's their next home game? A few weeks. A few couple weeks. Yeah. Ago. I want to see these forward Madison jerseys you all are talking about. They're nice. I don't know how to describe them, to be honest <laughs> with you. They're, they're kind of funky, but in a good way. Off the head of McLaughlin. Their colors are just so nice to work with. That light blue, kind of teal looking, and pink. You can do a lot with that. Chattanooga Red Wolves are back home at CHI Memorial Stadium on April 29th for a League One matchup versus Lexington Sporting Club on Wine and Whiskey Night. Then they've got that Cinco de Mile tilt versus South Georgia Tormenta on May 5th. Somersault. He'll lose it. Espinoza. Espinoza. So working into full 90 match fitness. Chattanooga. We'll try to use some of this at a time. And I think that hit the post. Comes back across again. But how did they get it or was that the post? How did they got it? How they yeah. got it? Yeah. Nice. Got down low to his right and made a really good save to protect the shutout. Nick Holiday, let's go. Yeah, he wants that shutout for sure, right? Especially with the penalty kick save. See, he's kind of his, his defender switched off there a little bit and just left him high and dry, but. 93rd minute, sent across. Holiday. Sacrificing his body, and they'll call that against Chattanooga. A whole lot going in the, on in the box on that play. A couple guys flying down. Yeah, those are always so dangerous because as goalkeepers, you're just watching the ball here, and the ball just played over. He doesn't even see the player. He's just going for the ball. And he got just, the ball, too. Yeah. So strong. He got the ball, Emily. Yeah, that's that's so tough. It's the second service in the box. Ben's As a goalkeeper, you have to make sure that you're ready for the second efforts, and, and he was on that. Both the last two plays, he, he got the second save. We forget that he's 17 years that's old. Incredible. Yeah. 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 So they said six minutes. We're four minutes in. Probably a good chance they just added on another minute after that. Oh, 
Summersall. Well, the winless drought against Chattanooga is over. They have broken that hex and they've done it with a, an all-star game from a former Chattanooga player, Rafa Mentigan, with two goals. The brace, Nolex Anderson, also outstanding. Yep, the dry season is over. <laughs> Could have been worse. I mean, Avilas came up with some big time saves in that first half as well. Yeah, I think the difference between the two halves is, you know, NCFC had the opportunities in the first half, they just didn't convert them, and in the second half, they didn't miss. Final seconds counting down. Five in the back, looking like seven in the back right now. They try to put the clamps on this one. Hard to blame them. And North Carolina FC will be first place. First place in USL League One through five games. That is massive. Yeah, you go back to the first half, right at the end of the first half, and that penalty save from Holiday that really kept it 1-0 as they went into the break. And then really after that, it was all NCFC. Those are important moments throughout the season. You don't realize it then, but the penalty kick save might might have changed the course of what the end result might be. Amen. Pop fouls Brady. Cardonia. Mikey Maldonado was ready to go with Karen McLaughlin. They're gonna leave the fans with a little special gift right there if they got to it. Yeah. I don't think they're heading to the corner if they get it right there. There's the final whistle, and for the first time ever, North Carolina FC has knocked off Chattanooga. The final score, 3-0. Let's get the final thoughts first from the beautiful man, John Bouillet. Well, just a master class from NCFC tonight. Rafa was phenomenal, Anderson was phenomenal. Too much NCFC for Chattanooga. Yeah, and the two keys to the game, full 90 performance and finishing chances, and they did both those things to a team. Emily Gray, the star for the North Carolina Courage. We wish you well in your recovery from the ACL. Great to have you up here and hope you'll come back. Hope you'll come back too, John. And I want to thank Kyle Lang and his great crew for the beautiful man, John Bouillet, Emily Gray. I'm Dean Linky. Let me hear you say it. How about North Carolina FC? A 3-0 win over Chattanooga. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League, League One, cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League, League One.